You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. I'm joined now by Tony Kynes from Carlow IT Wexford Campus, who has just completed a two-year research project on why some consumers choose to shop outside County Wexford. But firstly, you might start by telling me a bit about your own background, please, Tony. Sure. I worked for my dad for many years. He had a spare shop. I then worked for myself. I had a dry cleaners and launderette, which I sold at the end of 1999. I then decided I needed to upskill myself. I, the computer agent sort of passed me by. There was a course in Gorey that had computer skills and actually had a cookery course involved in it as well, which suited me because I didn't know how to boil an egg. So I went along with that. They encouraged me to go to college, did a, an honours degree in business, and now I've just completed my master's degree. I know as part of the master's degree, there was a requirement on you to develop a thesis, which you completed a 60,000 word document in relation to. Tell me a bit about the topic you chose and the reasons behind it, please. What I was trying to find out was why Wexford consumers travel out of the town to alternative shopping venues, say the likes of Waterford, Arklow, even Dublin. Dundrum Shopping Centre. I did notice a few times I was in Dundrum Shopping Centre, I'd see a lot of Wexford Reg cars. So it just gave me the idea, you know, put the idea in my head, trying to establish why local businesses in the main street shopping areas are not supported. And tell me about the research objectives. Well, obviously the first objective was I tried to find out what affects consumer behaviour as regards shopping in the town. I also tried to find out, I did a sort of a survey where I compared how customer-focused retailers believe themselves to be, and on the other side of the fence, how customer-focused consumers believe retailers to be. I then compared the two to see where the service gaps exist. I also sought to find out perceptions of how well-managed or not well-managed the town is at the moment. I combined the three together, and that gave me sort of overall perceptions of consumers, what, what they think of the town. And this then generates the response of either shopping in the town or travelling to alternative venues. So how did you go about achieving those objectives? First of all, I did a door-to-door consumer questionnaire. This involved Wexford Town and rural consumers within a 10-mile radius of the town. I distributed 320 surveys and I got back 252 valid responses. I also conducted a retail questionnaire from with businesses in the town from Redmond, Redmond Square to South Main Street. I distributed 100 surveys and I got back 62 valid responses. In addition to that, I conducted 13 one-to-one interviews that included town retailers, a town strategist and some town consumers. So the approach you took was to focus on the consumers, the shop owners and the local authority. Tell me first about what you heard back from consumers in relation to their habits and purchasing decisions. Well, it's obvious that decreasing levels of disposable income are a major factor. People just haven't got the money to spend it these days. But there are other factors to consider. The influence of family and friends, the time consumers have available for shopping, store promotions and the variety of shops in the town. These are all factors that influence whether people shop in the town or not. I also noticed that consumers are switching to lower price branded goods, especially in times of recession. Studies have shown that the majority of consumers are quite happy with these lower price goods. One of the key things I found was the type of consumer that exists in the town at the moment, you would call them a prospecting type shopper. That These type of shoppers, they visit numerous stores before they make a purchase. They check out the prices, then they make their purchase. They focus solely on quality, value, after sales service, good deals. The final thing I found was it's also important for retailers to note that female shoppers and those in the 18 to 24 age groups in the town are playing an important part in influencing the shopping habits of others. In particular, the 18 to 24 group, age groups, they're high users of social media, so they can influence a lot of other people regards their shopping habits. So Tony, they're the main factors influencing consumer shopping behaviour. Tell me why shoppers are travelling outside the town to shop itself based on the research that you completed. Okay Carl, well, one of the key points I discovered from asking consumers, they have a big bugbear about the cost and availability of car parking in the town. Now I know car parking can be fairly cheap around certain areas of the town but people today just haven't got 
two eighty or you know to spend on car parking. You see other towns where they have shopping centres where the car parking is free. That's where they travel. And um, you also see other towns around the country where local authorities have actually abandoned charging for car parking because the actual cost of administrating it is too expensive. They lose money on it, so they've actually stopped charging for car parking. It's just not worth their while. There are certain areas in the town where there is a lot of car parking available, but consumers are telling me it's in the wrong position. You have this sort of golden mile from a, a multinational retailer one end of the town and it goes to Redmond Square. That's where the key shopping area is for where consumers go and there isn't enough parking in those areas. Tony, just in relation to the cost of car parking in Wexford Town, I know that there's rates of less than €4 Euros as a daily rate being charged across the town as we speak, which to me is as competitive as anywhere else in the country. I agree with that, Carl. However, from my research and talking to people, the majority of people come into the town and stay for one or two hours and it is quite expensive. That's their opinion that it is quite expensive if you're parking on an hourly rate and that's the average stay for most people one or two hours what else did you learn tony from speaking to consumers about the reasons why they choose to shop outside wexford town okay another prime consideration there's no in-town shopping center in the town consumers want an in-town shopping center in the town with brand name stores under one roof People will travel. If there's no in-town shopping centre, they'll travel to other towns. You see it on Sundays, cars. It's just a, like a, an, an Irish habit. People will travel to other towns. If you haven't got an in-town shopping centre, they'll travel. It's just one of those things. And it's lacking in this town. Yeah, well, I'd certainly agree with that. You know, I'm in a town myself six years at this stage, and it's something that always surprised me that a town of its size didn't have an in-town shopping centre. One thing that consumers love is convenience and to be able to go in, park and stay under the one roof for a number of hours shopping totally makes sense. So it is certainly something that I can imagine did come up an awful lot in the survey itself that was conducted. Yes, one of the other things I did notice, that consumers travel out of town two shopping centres due to a better variety of stores. You have local stores, national stores, multinationals, they're all under one roof and there's great convenience there for consumers. Another key factor, Carl, was the fact that consumers told me that they feel stores in the town are not carrying the stock they used to carry. You know, Consumers like to go in and get the product on the spot. Um, they don't like to wait, and if they if it's not there, they'll travel somewhere else to get it. Now it is a little unfair on the retailer in that, you know, we're living in tough times now. The banks are have tight controls over credit. Obviously, the retailer doesn't have the facilities they used to have as regards overdrafts, so they can't tie up stock. So you know, it is difficult for the retailer to carry the stock that everybody wants. What else did you learn from the consumer when chatting to them? The lack of structured Sunday and late night shopping hours is another key factor, especially during summertime, peak times in the summer, Christmas time, during the opera festival. People want the shops open on a Sunday afternoon, maybe for a few hours, one late night shopping night per, per week. Tourists expect it. I mean, if you go on the continent, go on holidays, you'll see shops open late. I know it's a small town but tourists do expect to see shops open on a Sunday afternoon. Um, I took a stroll down last October during the Opera Fest. I think it was the first Sunday. It was a nice mild Sunday. There was a traffic jam on the quays. Lots of tourists strolling up and down the main street. The majority of the shops were closed. That's a very valid point, Tony, that there is no structured Sunday or late night opening. And in order to make that happen, I think there needs to be a collaborative approach between all of the retailers within Wexford Town itself, and whether that be for a retailer group or for the Chamber of Commerce, to make that happen. Um, so that's certainly something that should be worked on, in my opinion. Uh, what else did that research turn out for you? Well, another key factor, a lot of people, especially um, women, complained about access to stores. Now, when I say access, they we're talking about, you know, prams. They can't get prams in and out of stores. Wheelchair access is poor. Now, I know the County Council are working with retailers to try and, you know, improve access to stores. There's an initiative there. But it's just one of those factors that people complain about and is another reason why they travel out of town to shop. I know, Tony, that you did a lot of research around the whole area of customer focus as well. Tell me a bit about that, please. What I did was I did a sort of a, I did a survey, right? I looked at how customer focused 
retailers believe themselves to be. I also then asked a series of questions to consumers on how fo- customer focused they believe retailers to be. I didn't, then did a sort of a comparison between the two to show where the service gaps are. Now, I did notice that one of the key factors I found was that the majority of consumers expressed a view that staff in Wexford Town stores are not well trained and lack approachability. In, in contrast, the vast majority of re- retailers believe their staff are well trained and are approachable. So there's an obvious difference of opinion there. So, Tony, there's an obvious service gap deficit there in relation to customers' focus from the perspective of staff training and approachability. What else did your customer focus research reveal? Well, Carl, probably one of the most telling statistics was the fact that although a vast majority of retailers believe their businesses always look clean and tidy, the majority of consumers disagreed with this notion. The poor condition of buildings on the keys was commented by the majority of consumers as portraying a bad image of the town especially as you come across a bridge or if you're travelling through the town on a train. Now, consumers also mentioned to me about the poor condition of the exterior of shops, especially on the second and third floors of buildings. You know, the outside of buildings not painted properly, shops looking dirty, shop fronts, various things like that. It just gives a bad image and creates a perception in the mind of consumers and that's another reason why they travel out of town. One thing, Carl, I must mention on a positive note is that consumers are very happy with the loyalty schemes that are available in the stores in Wexford Town. They really value that, that type of initiative uh, within a business. And it does produce repeat custom. So it's important that, that retailers who do not have that type of system in place have a think about inst- you know, instigating some sort of a loyalty scheme for regular customers. Um, just focusing on the retailers themselves, what did the research reveal in relation to how they felt the town itself has been managed? Okay, well, I did come across certain viewpoints that expressed, you know, they said to me there's been difficulties over the last few years, you know, between relationships between retailers and the local authorities. But, however, I have seen, you know, from other comments that things are improving, especially in the last 12 months. There's certain initiatives, positive initiatives, have been, you know, brought forward and which are breaking down the barriers that will definitely aid with the development of the management of the town. I have to say, you know, you've seen in recent times where local authority budgets have been slashed. The local authorities in Mexico are doing their best for the retailers in the town, but there's only so much they can do due to the financial constraints they are currently under. I also discussed with retailers their viewpoints regarding the Wexford County Development Plan. Now, a substantial number of retailer surveys were undecided regarding the effects of the plan. However, the majority believe it is restricting retail development in the town, thereby influencing consumers to travel out of town for shopping purposes. Carl, as mentioned earlier, the issue of the uh, in-town shopping centre, I feel that retailers should work with the local authorities to see, you know, check out the feasibility of having an in-town shopping centre within the town. It should benefit everybody in the long term. Well, Tony, there's certainly some very good recommendations made there. Now, the next area I'd like to focus on is recommendations that you'd make to shop owners in relation to how they can go about improving their level of customer focus. Well, Carl, the study recommends that if managers and store owners want to ensure that levels of staff training improve, they have to eliminate negative consumer perceptions that are creating a barrier in the development of good store relationships, customer relationships. In my opinion, the solution to these problems could involve additional training either in-house or involving the use of professional trainers. Managers and store owners must also develop a better understanding of the needs and wants of customers so that they can respond quickly to changes in customer preferences. This is important in today's um, retail environment. One way of achieving this goal is to ensure a business has a loyalty scheme, which we mentioned earlier on, because it's a good way of gathering consumer-based information. You must listen to your customer. That's the, the lesson you learn from this. And Tony, from the research that you've conducted, what do you think needs to be done to improve the overall management of the town itself? Um, this study recommends that all those groups I've just mentioned maybe organise a series of public meetings that will involve a structured debate as to what barriers are preventing the implementation of initiatives that will move the town forward particularly in relation to retailing and tourism. This is important as this study is, you know, it's basically shown there is a good link between retailing and tourism in the town. 
It's also evident, Carl, that negative public perceptions exist in relation to the shabby exterior of some of the stores in the main street and the key areas. Vacant shop units and the upper floors of buildings are sort of projecting a sense of neglect and decline. The next recommendation I feel should happen is that Wexford local authorities should approach the town's art college and local artists to establish if an interest exists in using empty shop units as temporary exhibition spaces. In return for a rent-free unit, the artists would maintain the interior of the building by utilising arts and culture to enhance empty shop units. A good focus would be created, which may result in an interesting party taking on a long-term lease. Wexford local authorities should also provide a link on their website that would provide documented details for landlords who may wish to let an empty unit on a short-term basis. This would provide the assurance they would require that their business could be returned quickly in good condition if they did get a a commercial letting. You could also check out the feasibility of utilising empty shop units as pop-up shops. Um, this could be suggested to landlords as a means of you know, re- rejuvenating empty shop units, increasing footfall, attracting potential retailers who may be interested in opening it out you know, in the town centre. Landlords would definitely benefit from this because they benefit through lower insurance costs because empty units attract higher insurance premiums. Finally, the feasibility of a virtual shop as a means of dressing up shop units should also be considered by stakeholders involved. This type of 3D virtual outlet could attract online retailers who don't, you know, they have do not have a bricks and mortar outlet. So it could possibly generate lots of publicity for the town as well. Some very good ideas there, Tony. Tell me more about these 3D virtual outlets, please. Yes, I've seen them around the place, you know, in various cities. Let's say you have an empty unit and you're walking by, you might look and you you see a 3D image, the whole window's covered, it might look like a delicatessen. You look at it and it looks like a delicatessen, but it's actually just an artist's impression. But it cleans up the building, it makes it look tidy, and again, it gives a good impression for consumers. You know, the aesthetics of the town looks better, and it it creates a better image of the town. Well, Tony, the findings of your research are certainly eye-opening. I think that there is something for every retailer across the county to take from it. Thank you for dropping by this morning. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance.